They were the summers where your feet were black with dirt by late August because you hadn't worn shoes since June. They were the summers of bathing suit tan lines, sun-kissed noses, and scrapes on your knees from adventures along the way. They were the summers of reconnecting with nature, with family, and with the freedom of childhood. For 30 years of my life, we took off in June to head up to the Adirondacks, tired from the school year, a little soft around the edges from suburban life in Northern Virginia. Eight weeks later, we returned, browner from the summer sun, stronger from running, climbing, and swimming, and happier with the memories we had just made. For eight weeks, we would have no real connection to the outside world. Most of this was really before cell phones, and even if we had them, they didn't work anyway. There was no reception, no internet, and no TV. And believe it or not, there was no such thing as boredom either. We were so active, from hiking the surrounding mountains to kayaking to water skiing to sailing. With our cousins, we played hours and hours of games, croquet and volleyball on sunny days, and competitive board games on rainy ones. Some of my friends from school stayed home and did summer camps or made money with summer jobs. Some of my friends went with their families on vacations to Europe or Hawaii or the beach, but for us it didn't matter. There was no decision-making about how we might spend the summer. We didn't need to spend money and go on a fabulous vacation overseas. We didn't have the money anyway. We had Lake George. So how did we get so lucky? What was my family's journey to Lake George? The story begins with John Kingsley. He immigrated from Hampton, England in the 1640s, starting a new church in his home of Massachusetts with the influential minister and author Cotton Mather. At that time, tensions were high between the Native Americans and the new colonists, and he and his adult son Eldad ended up being killed by the Passacanaway Indians. Luckily, Eldad had already had a son of his own who was able to continue the family line in this area. Several generations passed until Peleg Kingsley Jr., a captain in the Revolutionary War, moved the family to Fort Anne, New York. Frank Kingsley, Peleg's great-great-grandson and my great-grandfather, founded F.H. Kingsley and Sons Ford dealership in the early 1930s in Whitehall, New York. The decision he made that led us to Lake George was to marry Lucretia Burley, the great-granddaughter of then-U.S. Congressman H.G. Burley, who was from Ticonderoga, New York, and owned land on the lake. Frank and Lucretia passed their land on to their three sons in three neighboring pieces. On the land that became my grandfather's, he and his wife, Barbara Hill, built a camp for summer use. His brothers did the same, creating a small neighborhood of extended family. That camp, built in the 1950s, is a structure that is standing there today that we use as our stomping ground every summer. My brothers and I, and our many, many cousins, represent the 13th generation of Kingsleys in America since John, and now my son is the firstborn of the 14th. This picture shows the current living four generations sitting outside at the lake on July 4th last summer. While our lives have changed drastically since the 1640s, the slice of land on Lake George is a reminder of that history and lineage. In our family today, it's an escape from our real lives, an eight-week journey back in time to life without iPhones, Netflix, and Facebook. It has become a special place to create memories and celebrate family, so, spe so special that it's even where I decided to take the plunge and get married a few years ago. It's a place I hope will stay in our family for generations to come, and all that come after me will appreciate it as I always have.